Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Oh! Ambrosia and desperately needed. Today is Monday, November 13th. I'm back after Hawaiian hiatus. So, yeah, here we are. Uh, I flew in late last night, <clears throat> so I'm a little bit on the tired side, uh, sucking down the caffeine. I have so much to tell all of you. Um, things about the trip, um, thoughts on writers' conferences, uh, many thoughts. I think I'm going to be sharing many thoughts for a while, uh, but I'll try to get through some of the high points today. Uh, it was a great trip. It was really excellent. I was glad I went. Uh, this was my third trip to Kauai and possibly my favorite. Uh, I don't know, for a number of different reasons. But I really just, yeah, had a great time there. Uh, let's do update on the book stuff first. So I did get a lot of work done on the book. Um, I was at this, at the conference, um, and I know I was a little cagey about it before I went because I wasn't sure what my situation would be. Um, but I went with my friend, Susan Lee, <coughs> who is a Clarion grad um, from way back and has published some stories and so forth, but um, had a hiatus to raise her kids and is now getting back to it. So she was at this conference and I did not register for the conference itself, which I kind of waffled on, but I'm really glad I didn't. And I'll get into why I'm glad uh, because you all know me or you may or may not, but you know that I have very strong principles on conference attendance, right? Because I help organize uh, conferences and I'm a believer in paying uh, participants and which we are working on with Nebula Conference, right? We're trying to get the model, business model better. Um, but that's not the topic of today's podcast. Today's podcast is going to be all over the place. I'm just warning you right now. Um, so I am not a believer in bar conning. Uh, and bar conning, which apparently a lot of people have never heard the term before, but that's when you go to a conference without registering. And so you go and you hang out in the bar. That's why it's called bar conning um, and take advantage of the people being there, but you don't financially support the conference. And so I think it's pretty clear why this is a problem. Uh, some people do this because they can't afford to go otherwise, which, you know, is, is a problem and unfortunate and something that we could potentially address. I know people who've done it who could very well afford to do it, and they're just like, oh, well, why should I pay when I don't want to go to any of the programming? I just want to hang out in the bar with people. And the huge problem with that is, is you are taking advantage of the fact that other people did pay. If other people hadn't paid the registration, which really just goes to the cost of the conferences, in most cases, then you know, it wouldn't be there. It wouldn't happen with all of that. So you're, you're taking advantage of, I'm trying to think of an analogy. It's sort of like um, if somebody, a group of friends all pitched in together to um, buy a, rent a beach house for a week, right? A group of friends all, you know, and everybody contributes their share of the beach house. And then there's that one friend who doesn't pay, even though they could, and they show up and sort of crash on. They're like, oh, I'll just crash on the couch on the on the porch. And, and you all don't mind, do you? And maybe you do, maybe you don't. But the f fact is, is that they're taking advantage, right? They're taking advantage of the fact that everybody else did pay to make it happen and to organize it, right? So they're just sort of surfing along. So I don't really like being that person. But I'm glad I did it the way I did because 
um, while I was in the bar talking with people, I had very little to do with the conference overall. And it was, um, it's an interesting conference model. I feel like I've been talking a lot lately about conferences set up to take advantage of writers and the especially aspiring writers or newly published writers who are, writers who are desperate for promotional opportunities. Uh, this is a very expensive conference and they do pay major authors to come in, but I do believe it's a for-profit model. Um, it was a really neat hotel and beautiful surroundings. And I'm not saying that I wouldn't go if they paid me to teach. I went back and forth. Uh, Susan asked me that on the well, one of the last days. She's like, so if I mention you to them, oh, and I should say that I was like, I was cagey about whether or not I should say I was there because I did feel kind of bad that I was bar conning. Um, I never got to meet a couple of the bigger writers that I wanted to meet. So, oh, well. Uh, and yeah. Um, you know, Susan had offered to introduce me to the conference organizer and I was like, well, you know, I'm flying under the radar. I don't know. So anyway, she asked me on one of the last days that if they paid me to teach, if they paid me to come back, would I do it? And I was waffling because I was like, well, I think there's a lot of things about this conference that are taking advantage of people. Um, it was incredibly non-diverse. It was very, very white. Um, and it was a lot of more older people, um, middle-aged and older, and people who could afford to pay the high dollar ticket to go. Uh, the hotel was not cheap. Uh, it was for me because I just stayed in Susan's hotel room. Uh, Susan, who comes from a place where she can pay for this kind of thing. And there were a lot of people there like that. So it almost felt like, I don't, I feel like the writers who were there really, really wanted to learn and really wanted to grow. And I'm not sure that this provided the environment for them to do that. So on the one hand, I feel like I don't know if I should support a model like that. On the other, I think if they did pay me to come teach, I think I would be um, helpful and supportive and maybe could help change it. Um, but we'll see. We'll see if they even ask me. Uh, after this podcast, they may not. Uh, yeah, so, so I'll keep processing and... Susan said she had, she stayed one more day. I flew back yesterday. She's flying back today. The conference went through a lot of yesterday and she said she has more thoughts on it. So I'm, I'm interested to process where we are with this thing. Um, and maybe come up with some more better ideas. I met some great people. Uh, it was really fun. Um, Otherwise, I was mostly, I, I'm not often, you know, like the wife, the spouse. Uh, you know, Susan would go off to do her master classes. And I think she got some, she had some great learning experiences. So maybe that was worth it there. Uh, I, I, it very much concerns me that there, and, and did to Susan too, that it was what the demographic was. And uh, this is not an accessible conference for young writers or for people who do not have a lot of disposable income. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, it was funny because I would get up and I would go, uh, I still woke up early. I'm, I'm kind of short of sleep because I would stay late talking to people and then I would go to you know, still wake up pretty early and go out and walk on the beach, which was amazing. It was next to Kalapaki Beach, was beautiful, uh, so I could go swimming and stuff. And then I would set up with my laptop in this kind of restaurant bar area that they, they really used nicely. They had great tables, and so I could set up. And so all but one day, I worked on Twisted Magic. I did finish the revision. Woo, woo, woo. Um, as far as I'd written it. 
almost as far. I like all but eight pages because that was into the next chapter. So I've passed 80,000 words, which is the good news. Um, that still means I have 17,000 words to go uh, before Thanksgiving, which is next week. So this is going to be hitting it hard this week to finish. Hopefully it'll just flow out there. Uh, I did a lot of work on the plane on the way there. It's a nice, good advantage of the very long flight out to Kauai. And I, yeah, like I said, worked all days but one, and that got consumed with dealing with some SIFWA stuff that I was glad got done, but I, I did lose a day. And so I followed my normal routine where I did my, my three one-hour sprints in the mornings, and then I would get done and I would go hit the beach and hang out by the beach. And that was, was great. It was a pretty nice life. And then like meet people for drinks and dinner in the evening. Uh, I did, um, so like one of the really cool things I did, I did this super cool thing, you all. I got to go on this and I didn't decide to do it till Friday. Uh, and I went online and decided, you know what? I'm just gonna, there wasn't good snorkeling at the beach at Galapaki beach. Um, and I even went online to check and see if that was correct. And yeah, you know, or that was what other people said. And I thought about like taking a lift to some other beaches that do have better snorkeling, but there's a real problem apparently with people having their stuff stolen and I would be by myself. So if you leave your stuff on the beach they're like they, they go and they take your rental car keys and steal the rental car. And it's a, pretty well oiled operation. And so I couldn't figure out a way for me to like take my phone so I could do the lift, but then also like not take my phone in the water. So I was kind of waffling on this anyway. Um, Kauai is home to the Nepali coastline, which is incredibly beautiful. And I had seen it once before. Well, Correction. I've seen it all three times that I've been in Kauai. Uh, the very first time was when we were there. I'm going to see what year that was. Hold on. Okay. It was March of 2006, which I mentioned to the people, a few people about it. And they're like, oh yeah, the 40 days of rain, which we were there for a week of it. And it was torrential rain nonstop. And we had wanted to see the Nepali coast and we had arranged for a boat ride to go. And we even got up very early and went there and we were ready with our rain slickers and everything. And they canceled. They said, it's, we just can't go. The weather's too bad. And which was disappointing, but we also trusted them. So we ended up going on a helicopter tour and we were incredibly lucky that we got to do the helicopter tour that we found someone willing to take us up and they, waited for like a break in the storms and we had a very short break and we went and flew and I have amazing photos from that. And it was incredible with, because the waterfalls were all going. Uh, but it, I had wanted to see it from the water. Now, when I was in Kauai last year for the retreat at my friend's house, uh, we had gone around the north side. So uh, Nepali coast is on the west coast of the island. Uh, and we had gone to this beach, Ka Beach, uh, and to go snorkeling and so forth. And from that beach, you can look down the coast and see the Nepali coastline from there. Kind of counts. Uh, but this time, I did this ride. That ride, it sounds like, it was almost like a carnival ride. So it was with Captain Andy's boat tours, and they took off from... Uh, the small boat harbor, which has a name. I wanted to get the name right. Kikiola, a small boat harbor. And it's basically a big rubber raft. It has a console in the middle and everything. But you go on it barefoot. And part of the reason that you go barefoot is because they had, there were like hold 16 people. And you sit on the big rubber side, inflatable side. And there are is a rope that goes along the bottom and you tuck your toes under the rope, which 
helped stabilize amazingly. And otherwise you hold on to these ropes that run down the sides and they go up. We went all the way up the coast and they warn you that this is very bouncy and to, you know, like not do it if you have back problems and that kind of thing. And I mean, it was bouncy. Like we would go up and we would catch air. We'd go up these waves and go boom down again. Uh, and it was, yeah, my whole body is sore. Like yesterday I was not only tired, I didn't do any work on the plane, but it was like every, I feel like my every tendon, all these micro tears. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was incredible. It was, you know, we got to go up and we stopped and we snorkeled. I got to snorkel with a sea turtle. This sea turtle was this big and right next to me, right next to me. Uh, and we got to see waterfalls going down into caves. We got to take the boat into caves. And it, and so like one really cool thing about like going up that coast, there were some really big waves, you know, like those huge rollers like the surfers do. And I am not a surfer, but uh, the boat captain was really experienced, Chase. And so, yeah, if you want to go to Kauai, go do Captain Andy's uh rubber raft snorkel tour get go on the one with chase chase and eva was great was his assistant and he would so like these great big rollers would be coming towards shore and he would take the raft and and he, it was motorized of course and then he would drive the raft up along the inner slope of the wave so we would actually go sideways and oh it was an incredible experience. Uh, probably the closest I will ever get to knowing what it's like to really surf. And it was, it was unreal and beautiful. Um, there were people like four people uh, all in one family on the boat got sick, got seasick and were puking over the sides. Um, I didn't, I never got queasy at all, but if you're motion sick, don't do this. And, uh, and I, I'll add some pictures, but we got amazing pictures and really fun people. And it was kind of cool because I was glad I got to go do that. Uh, I told David, you know, he wasn't able to come to Kauai with me, but you know, like he never could have done this. He, this is not something he could have done. And my folks who I often travel with, I don't think they, they would have hated this. Mommy would have hated this. <laughs> Uh, but it was, it was an amazing experience and I'm so glad I did it. And yes, getting to see that Nepali coast from, uh, the, from the water was a beautiful experience. I was just delighted. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the big thing. But now I'm incredibly sore. <laughs> All that bouncing, uh, it, it really, and it gives your arms a workout because you're holding on. Ah, uh, yeah, really wonderful spiritual experience. The Nepali coastline is amazing for the spiritual experience. So, so yesterday I thought, well, I thought I was going to work on the plane. I just watched movies and I slept some. So this week is the big push. Think good thoughts for me. Um, by Friday, it may take me into the weekend to finish writing this, but I really want to proof. I might proof over the weekend. Fortunately, Minerva Spencer is going to proof for me also. So I'll probably send it to her in the next couple of days. Uh, yeah, so I'm sure I'll have many more thoughts on Friday once I've processed some of this. But it was, um, yeah, really wonderful experience. And sorry for the week-long hiatus, but so it goes, right? Uh, I hope you all are doing well and uh, more later, right? I'll talk to you all on Friday. You all take care. Bye-bye.